What's up you guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm filming 15 different drop shot baits. Now drop shot is probably the most widely used rig and probably the most common rig for people to throw nowadays just because it's such an easy thing to do and it just catches fish no matter what time of the year. This thing is just a very finessey type of rig to throw. It's perfect for those bass that are just really finicky, but it's also a very productive method for fish that are just raging and ready to just bite anything. Here's the thing, drop shot, it's not a numbers bait. You're not throwing it to catch hundreds of fish a day. It's one of those styles where you're just trying to get a bite and you're having a really hard time. So this thing is probably one of, one of the top finesse rigs to throw. So guys, I have 15 baits behind me here. I have them in a whole bunch of different colors, but I personally like to throw drop shot rig, like the baits have to be very small for me. I'm making this bait look like it has nowhere to go. If it's a bait fish, it looks like it's wounded, it's hurt or something, and I'm trying to get a bass to come and get an easy meal. If it's like a crawdad type bait, I'm trying to make it look like it's elevated off the ground, it can't get to cover fast so a bass can come run up and get it. So these baits are meant to be very, very small. It's not a very power fishing technique. When you're throwing it, you're throwing it very slow, you're working it very methodically, very slowly. So I personally throw it a whole bunch of different styles. I work it hard, I slow it down. Most typically, people are throwing it and just barely moving the raw tip, just barely doing anything to that bait because the great part is, a little bit of a little bit of a shake to the line is usually all it takes to get that bait moving up and down and I'll show you in a little bit here but there have been times where I'm throwing it and I'm just pumping it and I'm just working it is really really hard and they just want it that way sometimes but most likely I'm throwing it and I'm just dragging it or barely hopping it on the bottom the thing is with a drop shot it has to look really really good so some baits, they don't look like anything. It's just a worm with a little curly tail at the end or something like that. But some of these baits, I'm mimicking a shad as perfectly as I can. So when you're drop shot fishing, your bait has to look really good. It has to have a very small hook and very thin line because if a bass swims up to a drop shot, it has plenty of time to just watch it and analyze it, see if it really wants to bite it. So if you're throwing that thing with like 30 pound braid with a big old flipping hook on it, the fish is going to understand that this is not right and not want to bite it. So your hook and your line have to be very, very thin and very small for that fish to bite. I throw it in numerous different line sizes. I've thrown it on 15 pound fluoro. I've thrown it all the way down to four pound fluoro. Typically when I'm throwing a drop shot, I'm throwing it on either four pound test or six pound test fluorocarbon. I, it's all a confidence thing. It's everyone has their favorite line. I love fluorocarbon, but if it's a monofilament, I have to have it in a very natural looking color. So either one works. One of my favorites is definitely fluorocarbon. I like to use four pound fluoro with a small, like one size one hook. It depends bait by bait, but typically if I'm nose hooking a bait, it's gonna be a size one, just because it's so small. It's a light wire hook, but I have to make sure that my drag is set to throw a four pound test because if you catch a fish and that fish just starts running and your drag is set tight, you're snapping off because you have such thin line. So if you're throwing four pound, six pound, eight pound line, you gotta go real loose on that drag so you can let that fish run if it needs to. Because again, you're trying to catch a fish, you're trying your best to squeeze a fish out of a hard time. So it's, it's not so much just trying to get numbers and numbers in the boat. You gotta make every single fish count. You gotta make that cast perfect in every way because you could miss that bite on a day where you can barely get one. If I'm throwing a drop shot, I'm throwing it on a light or medium light rod. Now you want to have a very, very light rod just because it's a light bait. It's usually a light weight and also you're throwing it on very thin lines. So a light rod is where you want to go and just to uh, set that drag very loose. So guys, remember, it's not always how far you can cast. It's more so how accurate you can cast. So when I'm throwing a bait out there, I'm usually using like a 3 16 1 8 ounce, a quarter ounce uh, little drop shot weight under, underneath that rig, just because you don't want a very heavy weight. If a fish comes up and bites that rig and it starts pulling up at it and lifts the weight off the ground, if you're throwing like a 3 8 half ounce weight, that fish is gonna feel it and probably drop it. And remember, you're not doing this to get numbers, you're doing this to get a bite. So whatever it takes, you gotta do. So. I like throwing one a 3 16 ounce weights when it's like a calm day. And if it starts, if the wind starts picking up, I'll throw a quarter. If the wind is super heavy, 
I'll be forced to throw like a 38 ounce, but that's still pretty far for me. I'd rather just throw different rigs for that point. All right, guys, for this video, I'm gonna be using a six pound test line, and I'm gonna be using a size one owner mosquito light hook. It's one of my favorite hooks to use just because it's a very light wire hook, and it's not very big. It's a very small size, one of my favorites. And also for a weight, I'm gonna be using a 3 16th ounce weight. Remember guys, lighter the better. I would go as light as you possibly can in any scenario for drop shotting, but if you need to, bump it up just a little bit. So for this test, I don't really need too heavy of a weight, so I'm just gonna use a 3 16th ounce weight just so you can get a better visual of how it works on the bottom. All right guys, for this video, I'm going to be nose rigging all these baits behind me. It's one of my favorite techniques, but something like a robo worm here you can rig it right through the middle make like rig it wacky rig sometimes sometimes that's where they want it but more than likely i uh nose hook it right here so when it's going through the water it's moving through like this so that's how we're going to be doing our test today let's see how it works all right guys for the first bait is the biospawn plasma tail in a 4.5 inch and it is in June Bug. This is one of my favorite baits to throw. It's just one of those confidence baits where it's just a simple worm. It's nice and flashy, but at the end it has a nice chartreuse little tail to it. So it can catch the eye of the fish, but it looks really good to them as well. Let's see what it looks like. So here is the plasma tail in action. As you can see, there's a, like the body of the worm is pretty fat, but it goes thinner towards the tail. Then right at the end of the tail, there's like this larger size point to it. It has a chartreuse tail on it. This is one of my favorite colors just because Junebug is such a great color in general, but it has a little tiny chartreuse end to it. And that's what catches the fish's eye, I think. Um, but I know Biospawn has dozens of different colors with different colored ends to it to make it stand out from the rest. Um, but this is a great bait because it's so flexible that when you jig it up and down, kind of like what I'm doing right now, it's just giving it a ton of action and it's having a great job of staying horizontal in the water because I know a lot of baits like to hang up or kind of lay down a little bit, but I think this one's the perfect buoyancy for a drop shot. All right, guys, the next bait is the Zoom Tiny Fluke. This one's in Smoke and Shad. This one is perfect for those lakes that are just completely just raging out on shad. This one is a perfect bait fish imitation here. So this one is a tiny little profile. This one's like, you'll catch a lot of small fish with it, but you know, after catching 10 small fish, you're bound to get a big one. This one has never let me down. Let's see how it looks. All right, so here's the Zoom Tiny Fluke. It's a very, very small profile. It's it's, I want to say it's like the perfect size uh, shad representation for my lake especially, but the great part is when you give it a little bit of a shake, it really quivers a lot like a dying bait fish. Now, I have this drop shot kind of short for my taste. I have it short just because I want it to be in the aquarium and you guys can get a very good look at it. I would normally have a longer leader to it, but right now I wouldn't be jigging that drop shot weight too far off the ground. It would normally just be barely lifting off the ground, but... As you can see, the action of the bait is phenomenal. It looks exactly like a fish, and it definitely, if you quiver it up and down, it looks it looks like it's dying. All right, guys, this next bait is the C3 Ice Pick. This is actually hand poured by a buddy of mine that lives kind of close to my local lake here, but this thing has never let me down. This bait is like my go-to bait if I'm having the worst day out on the lake. This is the one that definitely picks me up a couple more fish before I go back to the launch ramp. This is definitely my confidence bait. I have this wherever I go, and I've caught hundreds of fish with this. Hundreds of fish, and I've rigged it hundreds of different ways, but my absolute favorite way to rig it is on a drop shot. So let's see what this looks like underwater. Alrighty, so here's the ice pick. I'm really sorry about this, guys, about the color. It's like basically matching the exact color of the background, but this is my favorite color. So I really wanted to show you guys what it looks like in the color that I have a ton of confidence in. So this bait mimics a bait fish so well, and it's just the perfect size, such a small profile where it's very unintimidating, but it works great on a drop shot. Um, I know the owner of C3 Baits, he says that he uses it on split shots and like small Carolina rigs, kind of stuff like that. But definitely my personal favorite is on a drop shot. This type of bait is a bait that I can throw all the time and I can expect good results from it, but it's definitely a very small profile, and you can get them in a bunch of different colors. I'm sure you can ask him, he can make it for you. Um, but 
it's this one and also they make it in a clear one with purple specs that's also my favorite but this size is just perfect for like spring and summer just absolute my favorite all right guys this next bait is sure to get you a couple bites on a hard day this is the mega bass haze dong haze dong shad in three inch i'm probably pronouncing that wrong but this bait is made by mega bass so it's definitely a quality product but it's so it's so similar to a bait fish that fish love this thing. I just nose rig it like any other drop shot bait, but this thing has a little paddle tail to the end. So it's going to have that little tail quiver as you work it through the water. This one, I typically drag instead of hop, just because I want that bait fish to kind of go like, you know, have a more of a swimming look to it rather than a hop. Um, but this one is for sure going to get you at least a couple bites on a hard day. Let's see what it looks like. So I was shown this bait to use specifically on a drop shot, but I love using it on Alabama rigs as well, but it definitely shines as drop shot as well because it has a paddle tail to the end and it gives it a lot of action. It looks like the fish is moving. Now I like barely pulling it like that where the weight isn't really lifting off the ground, just the end of it is lifting off. That is perfect for this application. I am slowly working it and slowly jigging it a little bit so I can get that back fin to move back and forth really well. Now this is, I believe the color is Morocco, but this is like a great color to simulate a shad. Um, and when you work it like that, it behaves just like a shad as well. This one has very, very realistic eyes and a great, great shape to it. Unfortunately, it does break apart a little bit easier. So it's, I wanna say it's maybe a one to two fish bait, but I'm telling you guys, it's very, very worth it. It catches fish all the time in crazy different scenarios. I've caught in fish like in the weirdest places in the craziest scenarios because this just looks awesome, has a great profile to it. Definitely recommend it. All right, guys, this next bait is the Gary Yamamoto Shad Shape Worm. This is a natural shad and it's only four inches long. So it's a very unintimidating bait. This one is perfect for drop shotting and it's a Gary Yamamoto product. So you know it catches fish. So let's see what it looks like underwater. All right, here is the Yamamoto bait here. Has a great color. That is the natural shad color. That's definitely one of my favorite colors out of the Gary Yamamoto line. But it looks like it's having a little bit of a harder time staying horizontal. And I love it when drop shot baits stay horizontal. But it looks like it's having a little bit of a harder time, which is fine. It does get bit. I've gotten tons of bites off of it. But the tail is a great part about it because it definitely gives it a lot more action towards the end. And it is a lot smaller than the usual bait. So it that's like one of my personal favorite things is a small bait for a drop shot. So... This is a great size to impersonate a shad, great color. Um, it, it is having a little bit of a harder time staying horizontal. It's just because I have a shorter leader, but I can imagine that it would have the same action a little higher up just because it's a little heavier because it has a lot of salt in it, which is great. And I have definitely caught tons of fish off of this, so it's not wrong. It's definitely a fantastic bait that you should definitely try in the future. I have three different baits by RoboWorm because RoboWorm is, all their baits are great for drop shotting. So I'm gonna start off with the first one here. This is the four and a half inch curly tail. This one you can find at any Walmart. Usually every tackle store carries it. This one is a very small little profile with a curly tail to it. So when you work it through the water, the tail moves back and forth. This one is a, this one's a very, very good bait if you're having a hard day. This one's a confidence bait of mine. And especially in this color, this is ox blood. It works great for me in clear water, but I mean, I've caught it in muddy water. I've caught it in stained water, but my lake loves the color ox blood for some odd reason. I have no idea why, but this bait's caught me a ton of fish. So I'm sure it can for you. So let's see what it looks like underwater. All right, here's the curly tail. This is definitely one of the first baits I've ever tried throwing on a drop shot and had great success with it. Um, it looks like the tail is staying pretty upright. It doesn't look like it's really extending that much like a normal curly tail would. But that's an awesome look to it. I like it how it's staying up like that, but I'm sure a lot of people are imagining that that tail will be kind of straight out, like going back and forth like a regular like eight inch curly tail worm kind of style. But this is definitely a very unique look to it. I have caught hundreds of fish on this bait, so I it's definitely a fantastic bait. It has a little bit of a different look than the average drop shot bait. Um, but yeah, just to, just to warn you guys, it looks like the tail doesn't extend like a normal curly tail. Imagine that it's going to stay straight up like this. 
Um, but Robo Warren comes in hundreds of different colors, so I'm sure you can find the greatest color. One of my favorite colors is Oxblood, like Hologram Shad, Bait Ball. Those shad kind of colors and patterns are all great, but uh, Oxblood is definitely one of my favorite. All right, guys, my next bait is the Strike King Half Shell. This one's in Morning Dawn, but this one, it's a little bit different from the rest. It has some texture to it. It looks like it has a weird little flap at the end. It looks like it has some ribs to it. I have no idea what this is really trying to mimic, maybe like a craw or something, but this one is the open pour style. I know they make one, uh, the other kind of one that's not open pour, but this one's the open pour style, just to be exactly sure of which one I'm testing. So let's see what this one looks like underwater. All right, here is the Strike King half shell, and it looks like it's having a really easy time staying horizontal. That's actually a great looking bait for a drop shot. Wow, I'm very impressed. Now. One thing that's for sure, I've felt the regular type of plastic that Strike King makes for like the other dream shots and stuff like that. It's a little bit harder. This one's with the open port technology, so it's a little bit, it feels a little bit more looser. It feels a little bit more softer, um, but that's great. I love it. Also, a fun trick, if you get a uh, Reaction Innovations uh, beaver and you cut it in half, that's basically one of these. That's a little trick I learned, but... Um, definitely the half shell will smoke them. I love it in uh, Morning Dawn, but they make it in hundreds of different colors. Uh, but this is definitely a great bait, as you can see. It's staying very horizontal, and it looks really good on a drop shot. This next bait here is the Strike King Dream Shot. This is in four and a quarter inches. This one is like hundreds of people's confidence bait here. This one is a perfect shape for drop shot. It's a perfect shape worm with a thicker tail to it so it moves a lot more than the rest of the body. Let's see how this thing looks underwater. All right, here's the Strike King Dream Shot and I think Green Pumpkin. And it has a great, great form to it. It has a thinner tail with a larger end to it and that gives the end a lot of action because you're not trying to too much cover water. You're more so trying to move slowly and give it a lot of action, um, especially in the summer because you want to make that bait look like it's not moving fast. It, it makes the bass think, hey, this thing's not running away from me too fast, so I can probably speed up and catch it. So it's great for when you have the weight sitting on the ground and you just shake the line. This thing will be insane when you have the weight sitting on the ground and you just wiggle the line. It'll go up and down and it'll just cause a ton of motion and a ton of vibration in the water where bass will come up and get it. Now, it has a flatter end, and it looks like it has two little parts for, like, eyes on it. Um, so it has a little bit better of a look. But this is definitely a bait that hundreds of people have confidence in, and it's a lot of people's go-to bait for a drop shot. This next bait is probably a bait that you never would have thought went on a drop shot, but is actually awesome on a drop shot. This is the Kitek 2.8. I throw this thing all the time. I always nose rig it, and I just work it and like drag it through the water. This one's perfect for those lakes that the main forage is shad. This color is probably one of my favorite colors to throw for like simulating a shad type of pattern. But when you got murky water or like stained water and stuff, I usually switch it up, but my favorite color is definitely Pro Blue Red Pearl. Let's see what it looks like underwater. All right, here is the 2.8. Now that looks like a perfectly good shad right there. So with the Pro Blue Red Pearl, the Red Pearl doesn't stand out all that much. I'm looking for the blue back like a Threadfin shad kind of would have or like, you know, a lot of shad would have. And the great part about it is that paddle tail is so wide and it kicks so much like when you drag it just like that it gives it just a great look and a lot of action to it so i love throwing these in the summer because bass are so much more willing to just chase after stuff um, so this one i love to just drag it i sometimes hop it but majority kind of give it a tiny little shake as i'm dragging it um, this one uh, throwing it on a drop shots great for when you don't really know how far to have it go above the ground underwater. Like there have been times where I'll cast out a Kitek on a jig head and I'm just like, man, I don't know where it is in the water column. It might be really high, it might be really low, but throwing on a drop shot will definitely help you keep it at the certain elevation above the ground to where you want it. These Kiteks have the, like a really thick scent to them, like a squid scent, and they're just full of salt. So when the bass bite down on it, they're definitely not letting go, especially on a drop shot. They'll hang on to that thing and you'll just start feeling weight on the end of that rod. This is a fantastic drop shot bait. 
All right, guys, this next bait is made by Z-Man. This is the Trick Shots. These have that super stretchy body. It's made without elastic, so you can stretch it super far. So bass typically won't bite off the tail just because it would rather stretch it and they'll just let go. These baits will last you 100 fish. This one, I got it in a bad shad pattern. So it's like a grayish top to it with a white body. This one's great for nose rigging as well. This one, you can definitely put the hammer down on hundreds of bass on just one bait because it just lasts forever. So let's see what it looks like underwater. All right, here is our Z-Man bait. And it looks like it floats amazingly. Look how it, it's almost standing straight up when you don't move it. Now I know shad, like when they suspend in the water, they're kind of at a downward angle. so. When you move it like that, it looks like it's in the same position that a shad would be. That's very impressive. Now, that's a great color as well, but you know, not only that, it's made without elastic, so it will stretch a ton and it'll last you 100 fish on that hook. So, this is a great bait, great action. It has a skinnier end to it with a fatter tip. That is exactly what you want for a drop shot. It just enables so much more action. Now, these ones, the, it has some ribs to it, the tail has some design to it, so it does have a little bit more of a natural look, and it has some good flakes in it, so it gives it a nice shine, kind of like a shad would. So this is definitely a bait I'd recommend. A great floating bait for a drop shot. This next bait here is a classic worm that I'm sure hundreds of you have already rigged it on a drop shot. But this is the Zoom Finesse Worm. This worm is definitely like an old school type worm that still gets bites and still beats other baits out there on the market. You just can't go wrong with one of these things. I have this one in like a green pumpkin magic. So it's a green pumpkin with a little white silver specks to it. This one's definitely one of those baits that will get you a couple bites before you leave for the day. Let's see what it looks like underwater. All right, here is our Zoom Finesse Worm and having a very, very easy time staying horizontal. That I love that. That's probably one of my favorite things about a drop shot bait is how well it can stay horizontal. Now this worm has been around the block dozens of times. Thousands of fishermen have confidence in it. This is this is kind of like a bait that will go on a shaky head, Carolina rig, drop shot, you name it. This bait is just so universal and it just gets bit so well. And Another great thing about Zoom is they have like, I think it's like 20 baits inside of a pack that's selling for the same price as a regular bag of baits. So you definitely get your money's worth and you get a ton of them. But this one's in like a, I wanna say like a pumpkin magic has some little like silver specks in it. This is definitely one of my favorite colors, but you know, green pumpkin's green pumpkin, any kind of green pumpkin will do. But this bait is having a very, very good time on a drop shot. This thing will get bit easy. This next bait here is made by Berkley. This is the Berkley Powerbait Maxent Flat Nose Minnow. This one is mimicking a bait fish, and it's I got this one in a natural shad color. That's like one of my favorite colors to throw in clear water. This one has that super smelly scent to it. This one's meant for like nothing else is working. I can't get fish to bite anything. You need that super smelly scent just to be a little bit different from the rest. This one's sure to fulfill that promise there. This one, it smells terrible, but you know, it's a good thing that it smells terrible because when it smells so thick like that, bass will smell it from a ways away and come get it. So let's see what it looks like underwater. All right, here's our smelly bait here. Now this looks, it has the same profile as like a fluke from Zoom. But this one has a little bit of a different look. I can tell that the tail is slightly, like it's at a different angle than a zoom fluke would be. Um, this one has a great action, and of course, the great part about it is you're getting that scent. That scent is definitely a thing to keep you out of the crowd, and it's definitely a thing that might help you get a couple more bites out of this thing. This thing is mimicking a shad very well. It's in one of my favorite colors called natural shad. I don't know why, it's just I get bit so well on a natural shad type of color. So, Berkeley Powerbait Max Scent has it, this is definitely a bait to where if you're having a hard time on the lake, you pull this thing out, you'll catch a couple before you leave for home. This next bait is another classic. This is the Robo Worm Straight Fat Tail, or the Fat Straight Tail, I'm sorry. This one is one of my confidence baits. I had this one in a bold bluegill, it has a little chartreuse bottom to it. This bait has a little bit more bulk to them. They make this bait in a straight tail where it's really skinny. It's just a really thin worm. This one's the fatter size, so this one has a little bit more bulk to it. I personally think fish are a little bit more willing to go after it just because it's a little bit bigger of a meal, and yet it's still not very intimidating. So let's see what this bait looks like underwater. 
All right, here is our robo worm. This is definitely one that I've probably spent the most amount of time on on the lake just because it gets bit so well. But the great part about these baits is that it has a different color on the bottom. Now, when you, when you see me jigging it up and down right here, it, you can see the bottom, the worm kind of twists and turns and bends to where that bottom color of the worm flashes out to the sides. And that's great because, you know, that's the reason why I like the bull bluegills because it has a char, uh, chartreuse bottom to it. So when it spins, it really flashes its color, gets a lot of attention, but also it has a very bendable body, a lot of salt on it. And it's just, it's just a great all around worm for shaky heads, drop shots, Carolina rigs and stuff like that. But it's definitely a great bait for drop shot. It's definitely one of my confidence baits and you can get it in hundreds of different colors. I think Robo Worm's like one of the leaders for like having tons of different colors. So this is a fantastic bait. This next bait here is again made by Robo Worm. This is the Robo Worm six inch straight tail. This one is again in bold bluegill. One of my favorite colors for my lake. This one is a it's a six inch worm, so it's gonna get some attention and it's very, very thin. So it doesn't look very intimidating as well. I like them in the fat size and I like them in the straight tail size. I prefer to throw it in the thicker size like this one right here, but this one is many people's classic, many people's favorite. So I'm gonna try this one out underwater. All right, this bait is probably one of the most popular baits in the bass industry because you can find it anywhere and it has hundreds of different colors. This one is the classic six inch straight tail. And as you can see, this is the reason why it gets bit so well. Just look at the action on that and how it just, it, when the head moves, that bend, it just goes all the way down to the tail. It just transfers the bend so well. And this is a great bait because it has tons of salt on it. The salt is actually on the bottom of the worm. It's not so much integrated into the worm, which is, it's fine. The salt is still in it, which is good because when the bass bites it, the salt will come out. It'll taste real. Now, this bait is a classic. It's like the Zoom Trick Worm where everyone has it. You know, if you don't have a, like a, you know, the old saying, if you don't have a purple worm on the boat, you're crazy. This is the worm that, you know, a lot of people are talking about. Just, this is such a popular worm that gets bit super well. Definitely great for a drop shot. This last bait here is made by Rains. This one's the Bubbling Shaker. This one is a really, really interesting look to it because when you look at it up close, I'll show you in a minute, this bait has a whole bunch of little ribs in it and they call it the Bubbling Shaker because I think the air gets inside these ribs here. So right when you throw it into the water and you start moving it, it releases bubbles. That's in theory what will happen. Who knows what it looks like when I drop it down in the tank here. But this thing got me hundreds of bites before and I'm sure it can for you. Let's see what it looks like. All right, here is the Rain's Bubble Shaker. And it's kind of hard to see. It did release a whole bunch of small little bubbles to it. This is a great bait. It does live up to its name. I can see that there's a couple bubbles slowly coming out of it. Um, but you know, as I can imagine that if you keep it in the water for a longer time, the bubbles will come off, but when you recast it, I'm sure it'll pull down a couple bubbles again. But this is, I know a lot of people who say this is their confidence bait. They'd prefer this over a lot of other worms for drop shotting. It does come in a lot of great colors, um, but this bait is very, very flexible, has a good amount of salt in it, a good scent, and it's fairly re uh, like easy to get. Um, but you know, this bait is great because it has a thinner tail with a, a larger tip to it. So a classic drop shot worm, you know, you can Carolina rig them and, you know, shaky head them and stuff like that. But you know, this bait definitely shines on a drop shot, caught a bunch of fish on it. Definitely recommend putting this in your tackle box. All right, guys, that is 15 drop shot baits for you. Let me know down below, which one was your favorite? And also, did I miss any? Is there any one that you want to see underwater? Because I might just test it out in the next video. Guys, click right here. This is a video I did in the past. This is a stick bait video, seeing if any stick bait can compare against the Gary Yamamoto Sanko. And also click right here to subscribe so you can see more tests in the future. All right, guys, thanks for watching.